Did you know that you can zone away from the road? So I wanted to go over the five things that I wish I knew before starting Pocket City 2. Let's get into it, shall we? Number one, pause the game as much as possible, especially early on, just pause. You're not gonna be making any money through taxes in the very, very beginning. So most likely you're gonna be losing money in the very beginning. Some of the benefits for pausing the game, it reduces your landfill. If the game is not going, you are not collecting garbage, you are not producing sewage, all of these things, that if you keep the game paused, you will lessen the negative effects. The goal should be to only have one landfill and to get to level 21 in time to build the waste incinerator while only using up that landfill, that one landfill. Now because the game is how it is, it will unpause it for you after you build buildings, zone, build roads, etc. So in those times, such as picking up a quest, you will be unpaused, which will give you the chance to gain those citizens if you're trying to reach a population. It will give you time for the buildings to actually be built and for quests to be completed, but you can still pause the game and not complete those quests right away because while you're doing the next thing, a little time will run out and that building will be completed. So just continuing to pause the game as much as possible, even while you're building special buildings and things for quests, understanding that by building the next thing, or by going in and clicking on a quest giver, the time will start running, it will be unpaused, and your buildings will finish during that time. Thing number two, don't get bogged down in trying to make the biggest map possible at the very beginning because you're going to regret your choices. You do not need to go big in the beginning. In fact, it might hinder you you might get overwhelmed. There's a lot of tiles on a big map. I find the small maps are much easier to navigate. Thing number three, starting perks. So if you actually buy this game, the first city you build, you don't get a starting perk because you just start the tutorial, but the starting perks are awesome. When you first start the game, you go into the tutorial and that's fine, but you don't really realize that if you start a new city, you get perks. And these perks are very important and make the game much more fun, much easier in the beginning. Perks are the best. So I wanted to give you a little bit of tips on what perks I like. I personally like the uh, head of the curve. Level 20 instantaneously. It gives you a lot of the good buildings. I know some people want to do the resource buildings. If you want to make money real quick, I understand that. But the head of the curve gives you a decent amount of starting buildings. And you can quickly get to level 23, 24 before you even have to start zoning and all kinds of stuff. So it's really nice to jump the gun ahead of the curve, level 20. That's my starting perk of choice. I even will just ditch cities if that's not one of the starting perks. So I will give a shout out to Smarty Pants to the research. It's nice to start off with some easy layups, building reductions, stuff like that, cost reduction, stuff like that. So again, my ranking, number one ahead of the curve, Number two, Smarty Pants, which is the research points. And number three, TBD. All right, the fourth thing that I wish I knew before starting Pocket City 2 is milestones are actually more important than quests, at least in the beginning. So, milestones. Building roads specifically, but building zones a little bit. Other good examples of mil good milestones to go after are healing citizens, interactions, all of these things give you money just from passively doing things throughout the game that you were going to do and not specified through a quest. They're just uh, encompassing, you know, actions taken over the entire duration of the game. So the roads are probably the most important milestone thing that you can start. You get money every 50 roads you build, 50 stretches of road that you build, all the way up to 500. And in the very beginning, this basically nets out positive. This basically nets out positive because you can build a road, if you build 50 tiles of road and you get $10,000 and you spend 200 per road, that is zeroing out. But the next one, you build 50 more pieces for that same 10,000 that you spent, but you get 12,000. And so, it, it just keeps going up and up and up and up. 
And so you'll see people build dirt paths, you know, just to get the, the milestone and get all this money up front. And that's cool. And they'll get, they'll, they'll take the resources perk and do, you know, sell lumber at the supply shipping yard and, and, and all that to get money. And that's fine. But those things don't really come together in the flow of the game to, to me. Personally, I would rather actually build these roads out as they're meant to be, get the milestones as they come, and it just gets extra money as I build roads and I get the money back. It's great. If not more. It's just, it's great. Build roads, get the money back, if not more. That's great. And the fifth, most unique, most mind-boggling thing to me about this game is how the zones come together. So you can have a zone a full tile away from the road but you cannot have it two full tiles away from the road but you kind of can't have it two tiles away from the road right it's 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 weird i absolutely love that you can zone something and then when the buildings pop up you can move them and rearrange them as they are into zoned areas into not zoned areas once you zone them and they're built you can move them around as you please that is fantastic and that makes it so that you can really be super strategic about your cities so this fifth thing is so important, how you can be strategic because of how the zones work in this game. Tell me what you guys think down below, hit that subscribe button, and look at this video over here.